Well, there's a reason why we watch that video, and it's funny, but really that's the intention of, of our message series uh, this Christmas called I Came To. It's to clarify why Jesus actually came. You know, like this, this video that we watched, it's really all of us. It's us. We have our own ideas of who Jesus is and why he came and what he's doing and all that. And if you, if you check out the landscape of our culture, that's what you're going to get, all these different ideas of who Jesus really is. But the good news is that Jesus actually tells us in Scripture why he came. Can you turn me down just a hair, Josh? Why he came. And, and so that's what we've been doing. We've been looking through the Scriptures and seeing exactly uh, why he came. We're clarifying the reason that Jesus came. So if I could, uh, I could uh, back up just a little bit, just a quick review uh, to let you know about the first three weeks. And in the meantime, uh, if, if you'd like uh, to grab a Bible, I don't know if you have a Bible or not, but if you don't, uh, there's some of these around. There's a yellow, there's an orange. Uh, they're all the same. Uh, and the, some of the verses that we're going to read are going to be up on the screen, just the page number. I'm not going to make it that easy. You're going to dig a little bit. Okay, so, but the page numbers correspond to these Bibles here in the chair, so please feel free to grab one if you like and, uh, and read along with. I want you to know always that it's uh, the Word of God here, not just some dude talking. Um, the first week we talked about um, the fact that uh, Jesus came for who? You, that's a very good answer, and you, and you, and you, and you, and every, ber- every person on earth, he said that, that the Spirit of God is upon him, and he's anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, that he would heal the brokenhearted, that the blind would see, and that he would set at liberty those who have been bruised by the, the snake, the serpent, we've all been bruised, so we learned the first week why Jesus came to save everybody. Now, uh, the second week, we, caught, we, we saw that Jesus came because he was, uh, uh, he was a ferocious missionary, right? He was on the job all the time, never taking it real easy. Even when he was taking it easy, it was to, to, to recharge his batteries, to go back out onto the mission field. He was always doing what? Seeking and saving that which was lost. That's what, that's what he's doing. I don't know what you've been doing all week, but I can tell you what Jesus has been doing all week. He's been seeking and saving those that were lost. That's what Jesus was doing. And how did he do that? Mike! Hannah, he's calling people, right? He's calling. He, what's he doing? He's calling sinners to repentance. He wants us to turn from the way we were living and live his way. That's what he's doing. So while he's out there seeking and saving, he's doing it by calling you. Of course, we know that the Bible t- teaches us in Romans 8, 29, that we are uh, to be conformed into the image of Christ. So the reason why we're go- doing this message here is not only to see what Jesus is doing, is what? To see what you should be doing, Right? We should see what you should be doing. So if Jesus is seeking and saving and calling, what are you supposed to do? It's three things. Seek, save, and call, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Now here's the next week. We got into week three. Uh, we learned that, 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 that uh, Jesus came, that you might have life and have it abundantly, right? Abundantly, overflowing. It should be so good that when you walk down the streets, it should be pouring out of your pockets about how good it is, right? So that other people can pick some up. Leave some for someone else. We should have it abundantly, and we talked about last week that the the way we experience the abundant life is in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. See, I want to explain something to you in case you didn't notice. What you just experienced just now, not everybody gets that. You were blessed just now in the presence of God when we were singing. When he was here where you could walk through the room and it felt like you were swimming through butter, not everyone got to do that today. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. But you know what? He wants you to experience that then and now and tomorrow and the next day. Every single day, every single moment, all the time. That's what he wants for his people. And that's what he wants for you. Now, this week, we're going to study another verse. Uh, You can open up your Bible to Matthew 20, 28 if you want to. Uh, While you're doing that, I'll tell you that... uh, Recently, uh, Meredith and I, we had our, our fifth anniversary uh, just a couple weeks ago, and, uh, and I love my wife. She's a tremendous woman, I, and I'm, I'm truly gifted to have her. Um, I have, as the scriptures say, and we know that the scriptures are right because it just keeps coming true, that if you found a wife, you found favor with the Lord. That's the time for all the husbands to say amen. amen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
so, so uh, five years ago, we went to the beach, real simple, and, and we had this great, great, great wedding. And, and uh, I am so, uh, at the time, and still really, I'm, 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 I am so incredibly uh, cheap, and even when I have money, I'm cheap, and, but most of the time I don't have any, but the, when we're getting married, uh, didn't have much, and so we went out to the store, to this little uh, church gift store at this church up in uh, Village View. You know Village View, right? And I, we bought these little rings, this one here. And, and I used this one, this little, little spinner on it. And my wife has one, and we used these for our wedding day. So when we did our thing, and, you know, you love me, I love you forever, you know, done. Uh, we used these, these little $26 rings. Amen, right? Yes. Now, what's that? Yeah, yeah, that's good right here, right? Um, and so the plan was this. We were going to use these uh, temporarily until we got our tattoos. We got a, yeah, <gasps> he's got a tattoo. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm tough. You see this tattoo? Okay, so. And so we we're going to get these tattoos. Um, still cheap. Uh, two of them for 80 bucks. That's the way to do it right there, Okay. Guys, I'm hooking you up, okay, if you're getting ready to propose. Cheap is good. Uh, so we're going to do this. So we went and did this. Now, when I did this, um, this is my wedding ring with Meredith. This is my, this is my allegiance and my love and loyalty to, to her expressed here on my hand. Uh, we didn't want to get rid of this ring, though. Uh, so now I wear this right here uh, for Meredith, and I wear this one for Jesus. Now, on the reason why I, I wear this, I'm not a big jewelry guy, but I like it. Um, I'll share what it says on there. It says that he died for me, uh, I live for him. Okay, and that's, listen, I fail there a lot, but it's a great reminder of, of really who I'm supposed to be. Um, but I realized something, as, as cool as that is, it's cool, you know, I'm, I'm getting better, I'm getting better. Um, my ring would be different than Jesus' ring. My ring, it was supposed to be like Jesus, right? But my ring would be quite different than his. See, his, his ring would read something a, a little bit different. He definitely would say, I, 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 died, I died for you. But he would also say, um, I lived for you. And, and really, that's, that's what makes him so beautiful and unique, is that um, although I can live for him, that's awesome, um, but um, I didn't die for him. And, and most often, I don't live for him. But his ring would, would be amazing in that um, I lived for you and I died for you. Like, he is, he is totally crazy in love with you. And that tells the story of his entire uh, existence. And, and that's really what we want to share tonight. Um, the Bible verse that we uh, want to uh, share tonight is, is Matthew 20, 28. And it just says this, uh, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many, for many. Now, uh, before we uh, jump into to ripping that verse apart, I just want to uh, tell you, you know, a ransom, like that's a word you see it in the Bible, and I don't want to just jump over it because I want you to understand what, what this is. Um, a ransom is, is just this, very simple. It's a payment. It's a payment to release a prisoner. That's it. It's a payment to release a, pres a prisoner. Um, you remember I mentioned just a moment ago that, that he, one of the things he did was to come to set at liberty those that were bruised, right? To set free, uh, liberty is to be set free from oppressive restriction of the enemy, okay? And that is what he came to do. He came to pay a ransom uh, for you because you are in, in prison. But, but here's the amazing thing about Jesus, okay? He didn't make a payment for you. He is the payment for you. Do you see? It, it's one thing to throw someone some money, and I'm saying we should help people, but it's one thing to throw someone some money to, 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 to get something to eat. It's another thing to give your life for them, like that you are the money in his hand. See, Jesus actually was your payment. He was your payment. Now, 
I have to do a little work before we get to uh, explaining this whole verse, but uh, the reason uh, why Jesus had to give his life, uh, it says it also in Scripture. Uh, you guys, first of all, are you ready to be gorged by the Bible tonight? Because I'm going to stuff you full till you explode. Okay, not very much talking for me, but a, lot, a ton of verses. Hebrews 9.22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So let me take you back in history a little bit. There's this, uh, since the Jewish nation began, there's this, there's, this Levitical, uh, there's, this, there's this Levitical sacrificial system, okay? And so when you sin, this is what God said, when you sin, you have to make a sacrifice. You have to kind of say, you're a, you're, you're, I'm sorry, and here's like a payment. That's the ransom. Here's a payment for what I've done. I've, you've, got, you've got to pay for it. So there would be um, like young bulls, they would, be, they would be killed, and the blood would go to the altar. Uh, there would be male goats, and these are for different reasons, but these were all for sin. There'd be male goats, blood on the altar, uh, female goats, blood on the altar. Uh, if you were poor and you didn't have those animals, you were required to bring a dove or a, pr- or a pigeon, kill it, the blood goes on the altar. And for those that were very, very poor, who owned no animals, God would make a concession for that too, but you had to make a payment. You had to make a payment, so you'd have to bring some flour. Okay, you'd have to bring some flour. Now, um, to, to understand this verse, to, to get the proper perspective as to why uh, Jesus came and to put a fresh perspective on Christmas, <clears throat> you have to understand two things about God's nature and character to understand why this this verse is even here and what it means and the magnitude of it. Why a ransom? Why does this have to happen? Okay, so here's two things and two things only that I'm going to share with you tonight. And, and I have to say this, that I've been doing this now for about uh, 10, 10 and a half years. I've been preaching and, and I've, I've, I've had to preach Oh, I've had the pleasure of preaching, I don't know, maybe uh, 500, 600 sermons. And, and I get excited when I'm digging into the Bible. And sometimes it goes long and you get tons of stuff and you don't want to turn it off and all that. And I'm like, yeah, I want to I share all this. I'm going to share this. And, and, you, and, you, and you read through and you're like, yeah, I don't have three hours to do this, okay? So, so I've, I'm probably going to like stop in a place that seems like there's no end, but I have to because I, I want to gorge you, but I don't, wanna, I don't want you exploding all over the place in here. So we're going to cut it into two. Like it's going to have to be next week. I can't give you all. So here's, here's two things I just want to go over uh, tonight with you. Uh, the reason why there must be a ransom is, is two reasons. There's two things about God you have to understand. Here's the first one coming at you right here. If you take notes, please write this down. God is just. God is just. Um, here, here's what... Here's what it means to be just. Again, I don't want you to just hear a word in church, Bible word, and just not understand what it means. God is just. That means he is morally right and fair. He is guided by, and I don't even like that, that definition, the guided by truth, because guess what? Amen. Okay, you guys are learning. I, I love you. That, whoever yell, I love you the most. Okay? Uh, guided by truth. Um, and then this, this is awesome. A proper distributor of reward and punishment. That what, what his response, because he is morally right, because he is fair, because he is truth, he will properly distribute either reward or punishment based on that standard and that standard only. God is, he is just it, it, all the time. He is morally right. He is fair. Um, <clears throat> the Bible says in Isaiah, here's some verses for you so you can understand. Isaiah 30 verse 18 says that for, for the Lord is a God of justice. He's a God of justice. Deuteronomy 32 4. For all God's ways are just. He is a God of faithfulness. And I love that, that he says faithfulness. That means that not only is he just today, but he's just when. And he was just yesterday he's just now and he's just when tomorrow he's always just that's encouraging and he's without injustice he is without injustice um here, here here's some more um and, and i just want to i want to remind you that, that that payment payment is absolutely necessary you, you there has to be a payment okay rewards and and and, and punishment are a must because God is just, okay? He is just. Do me a favor and uh, go to do, uh, Exodus 34, uh, verse 6. Exodus 34, verse 6. 
This is a great story. You know, you guys heard of Moses, right? And not, not me, but the, 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 you know, the real one. And, and, and he's up on the mountain, and Israel's misbehaving as usual. And, and, and the first set of Ten Commandments, they don't work out so well. You know, that's a, that's a long story. But So he goes up, and he's going to get another set of Ten Commandments because he smashed the other ones because the Jewish folks are, are misbehaving. I had to put on my cheaters here, man. I can't see nothing. My goodness gracious. <clears throat> All right. So, so it says here, um, Moses is hanging out with, with the Lord. He does that. And, and special guy. Uh, the Lord passed in front of Moses in, in verse 6. And, and, he, and the Lord himself starts speaking. And he's, he's yelling out. He starts yelling out his own name, right? Yahweh. Now listen, I, I love that. That Yahweh, right? Uh, do you know that that's not really like his name, right? His name is, is three con uh, four consonants. The tetragrammaton, we're going to call it, okay? It's, it's, it's Y-H-W-H. You can't pronounce that, right? Because his name, you're going to hear this in a moment, we'll hear more about this. It's holy. Like, it's so, it's, you can't even speak his name. It's perfect, okay? But, the, but we translate it some so we, can even, so we can even tell the story. So Yahweh, the Lord, uh, the God of compassion and mercy, I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish now listen here, this, this is awesome. I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. So you can see there's reward, right? So for uh, good boys and girls, right? He's, he's a rewarder. He's, he's unfailing love and faithfulness, lavishing unfailing love to a thousand generations. And then he says, he even goes above and beyond. He says, I forgive iniquity. I forgive rebellion and I forgive sin. Um, but he gives us a way for that. So he wants to pour out his, 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 his faithful love upon you, but, but, but we sin, and we don't deserve it. And so, but he makes us a provision to receive it once again. And back then it was through these animal sacrifices. You've got to open up the, the, the avenues of blessing once again. So he's going to do this, but if you don't use the, the provision that he's given to you to open up the heavens again, what does he say? I will, but I will not excuse the guilty. That's a just God. It, it, he is going to reward or he's going to penalize, but something's coming. Something's coming and you, and you can't avoid it. You can't avoid it, okay? Um, so it says here in uh, Galatians 6, verse 7, it says, uh, do not be misled. In other words, uh, do, do not be deceived. Okay, and you know what that means? Don't deceive yourself. Don't deceive yourself. You know who deceives you the most? Raise your hand. Your heart is deceiving and wicked above all things. And you will think that things are going good. You will think that you can dodge the bullet, but you cannot. Do not be misled, for you cannot mock the justice of God. He will reward, he will penalize according to his perfect standard. Well, says who? Says who? Well, let me tell you, says who. If you look in the scriptures, it says right here, uh, which, you, gotta, you have to be, listen, you have to be the truth in order to be the just God who hands out reward and penalty, right? You have to be the truth. And since we're a Bible-believing church of Bible-believing pro professing Christians, amen, amen, yeah. So we're going to go with what the Bible says. John 14, 6, Jesus Christ himself says, I am the truth. And John 16, 13, it says the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. And in that same verse, guess what the Bible calls the Holy Spirit? The Spirit of truth. 2 Timothy 2, 15, the Bible is called the Word of truth. 1 Timothy 3, 15, the church, who's that? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on now, you're the church, right? The church is the pillar and the foundation of truth. Do you see how it's, how it's all woven together? Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, God's Word, and us. You, you, you cannot, listen, you can't love God's Word and not love His church. Did you know that? You can't say, oh, I live by God's Word, but I don't love His church. I don't love those people. I won't hang out with them. It doesn't happen that way. You can't say you love Jesus and not love the Holy Spirit. You can't love the Holy Spirit and not love, love the Word that He inspired. You have to love them all because we're all one big, happy family of shiny, happy people holding hands. I knew I could work that in somewhere. That was awesome. Okay, so let's go back. Let's go back. Um, I don't even know where I was. 
All right, so, so he is the truth, and since he is the truth, that makes him uh, qualified to distribute punishment and reward. He is the one who is able to do that because he is the truth. Now, here's the second one. We'll spend a little bit more time here. The first one is God is just, and the second one is God is holy. God is holy. Okay, God is holy. <clears throat> Isaiah had a vision of the Lord. And he said he saw the throne room of God. And he saw the Lord. And he was high and lifted up. Exalted king. He is the king. He is the king. And, and just a reminder, when you walk into his presence, even though Jesus said you can come, you need to know who you're dealing with. Okay? You need to know who you're dealing with. This is the star-breathing, Red Sea-opening, walk-on-water God. That's who he is, okay? He is exalted. He is, what's the next word? Oh, man. I didn't even think we should have the rest of the, the definition. It doesn't even matter, does it? He is perfect. He is perfect in goodness and righteousness. Uh, holy means to be consecrated, completely set apart. Completely, he is unique. Our God is unique. He, there is none like him. There is no, there is no one like him. He is absolutely perfect in all ways. Uh, uh, there's many people that that. No, no. He is perfect. Isaiah six three. Um, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Uh, you know why it says holy, holy, holy? I'll give you a couple of reasons. One is uh, Father, Son, Spirit. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit. The other thing is, is stress. He is holy. He's not just holy, is he? He's holy. Say it with me. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Bless you. He is so holy and perfect. Revelation 4.8. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. You know what? Holy is three things. Holy was, holy is, and holy will be. He will always be holy. He will always be perfect. That's who we're dealing with. Just as, 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 as his thoughts are, are, and our thoughts are not the same. Did you know that? Just as the heavens are above the earth, so are his ways higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And make no mistake about it, no matter how much the transformation in your life, there's only one God. There's only one who will ever speak and creation will come out of his mouth. There's one Jesus and one Jesus only. And that's it, okay? You can clap for him. It's for him. It's not for me. He deserves it. It's all good. It's all good. Ephesians uh, 1, 21. Here's some more for you. Now he is far above, I love this, <laughs> above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else in this world or in the world to come. That's, that's everything. That's everything. That's who Jesus Christ is. He is holy. Here's some more. Uh, Isaiah 43, 15. I am the Lord, your holy one. Singular. Singular. The creator of Israel. Your king. That's who he is. This is God himself speaking. He's speaking about who he is. He's giving you his identity. He's telling you of his nature and his character. Who am I? I am the Holy One, the Creator, your King. Uh, well, perhaps you might say that, that maybe, maybe Jesus is just like one of the ways. I mean, that's the world we live in, right? I mean, there's all, there's all kinds. Of, listen, just get your chi, man. Just get your chi. Get, your, get that zen going. And there's all different ways, right? That's, that's what our world will teach us. That's what our world will teach us. But you know what? Here's a good amen spot. We have the word of God. Amen. And the word of God speaks to that. In 1 Samuel chapter uh, 2, verse 2, it says, There is no one holy like the Lord. He's singular. He's singular. Here's another one. I love this one. This is awesome. Isaiah 40, verse 25. To whom then will you liken me that I would be his equal? Says the Lord, the Lord, singular, 
only. You know what that is? That's a rhetorical question. When he says, well, then who then would you liken me to that I would be equal with them? It's a rhetorical question. You know why? There's no answer to that. Right? You can go looking for that answer. Feel free to go looking for that answer and call me in about a million years when you find it. Because there is no answer to it. Because there's only one God. He is holy. He is perfect. He is singular. There's no one like him. Now you say, well, how holy is he? Well, the Bible speaks of that too. I love this. Now this is, you're going to find this in the NIV. Habakkuk 1.13. There's a book in the Bible called Habakkuk. It's in there. It's like Prego. It says this. It says, your eye, listen, 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 listen. Focus on the Lord. Uh, Habakkuk 1.13. Uh, Habakkuk says to his Lord, the Lord, your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You can't, he can't even look. Like, you want to know how his ways and his thoughts are, are higher than ours? Even when we want to be good, right? And something comes into our peripheral, whether it be TV or live, that we know we're not supposed to look at, what are we doing? Come on now, don't leave me hanging up here. I'm the only sinner here, apparently. <laughs> we look. We, we look, we, our eyes just drift over to what is not good for us. But, but the Lord is different. His eyes are so pure, he can't even look at evil. He cannot look at evil. Okay, so, so we know... Uh, because God's word says so that God is holy. But we, well, we talked earlier that, that we want to find out who Jesus is and why he came. But the third thing was, was who we're to be, right? So the application to this is also found in God's word. We know that God is holy. We know that God is just. And 1 Peter 1.15 it says, But now you, point to who you is before I read on. Point to who you is. Yeah, you, right? But now you must be holy in everything you do just as God who chose you is holy. Wham. You feel it? That's pressure. That's a lot. That's a lot. God's justice requires payment. But God's holiness determines the payment. Do you understand? It determines the high payment. The blood sacrifice speaks of the height of God's holiness and the severity of sin. Uh, sin activates God's justice. If you want to see God move, sin. And you will activate the hand of the Almighty. Okay? But, but listen... Hear me out. Sin does not determine your payment. Sin activates his, just, his justice. But his holiness in relation, see, we all think that, that our sin, it, you know, we, we do something wrong and, you know, we're going down the road and everything's fine and we sin and we're off in the ditch a little bit, you know. And we messed up, right? And, and listen, let me tell you something. no. That's not it. See, that assumption is that God's over here, like, like I am right here on this floor, just walking along, and we fall short. We put easy definitions to sin. We fall short. No, no, no. We may be down in the ditch, but his holiness is up on Everest somewhere. And that chasm right there, not the depth of your sin, but the height of his holiness is what determines the size of the ransom. And that's why the ransom is so big. Because of the height of God's holiness, his perfection demands a massive payment. That's who he is. Get your focus off your sin and get your eyes on the holiness of God. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Listen, it is no small deal it's a big deal it's a huge huge deal that requires a huge ransom you know that's why that's why animals had to it wasn't like 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 you know when we when you guys bring an offering you like you bring some money in and you drop it into the basket like that's cool that's cool that's good right they had to bring they had to bring an animal like they might not have a lot of cash like we we do stuff we go to Winn dixie or something we buy a cow right they don't they didn't do that right they raised a cow so so like 
they don't just drop some money in the plate. They had to take an animal, right, from their flock and kill it. That's a big deal, right? It had to die. But it wasn't just like any animal. It was their best animal. It was their best animal. It's a big deal, this ransom for sin. So listen, and there's a lesson in that. Look, even though we're not slaughtering animals anymore, i got to tell you something. That sin always has been and always will be super expensive. It's always been expensive. It will always, listen up, sin will always, 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 when all God's people said, always cost you and the people around you dearly. Certainly your sin will find you out and when it does, massive hemorrhaging through your whole life, you will never hold it to yourself. It will impact the people around you. And you join this church, so you better get right. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. I, well, I'm not kidding, but you know. Yeah, I need to as well. You cannot mock the justice of God, for He is holy. He is holy. His holiness standard is high. His watermark for you is Himself. And therefore, the ransom for this chasm is massive to release you from the punishment, his just punishment. It's massive because of his holiness. Because of his holiness. <clears throat> How huge would this ransom be? Well, do me a favor and turn to Hebrews chapter 10. you hear the Lord tonight, do not harden your heart. Do not harden your heart. Hebrews chapter 10 starts talking about this sacrificial system that I speak of tonight, and then it'll transition to you. If you're there, holler at me. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10, it talks about this old system under the law of Moses. It says this old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview. I like that. It's not just a preview. Uh, animals are dying. They're giving up the best thing that they own. And that's not just a preview. What is it? It's a dim preview. It's nothing compared to what's coming. It's a dim preview. Uh, how about, no, I can't do that either. Oh, hallelujah. A dim preview of the good things to come. Uh, but that system was not the good thing themselves. Uh, the sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year. But they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. And it says that because in the Psalms it says, who can come before you and worship? <coughs> Only those who are blameless. And this sacrificial system wasn't going to cut it because they weren't blameless, because they brought an animal in today, and the next day, they were us, sin. And it disqualified you. There's a problem. Say there's a problem. There's a huge problem. There's a huge problem. His holiness required that there was a problem, right? There's a problem, because I'm perfect and you're not. If they could have provided perfect cleansing, these sacrifices, that the sacrifices would have stopped. For the worshipers would have been purified once for all time. Man, that would be nice, huh? Once for all time. And their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. Well, that would stink, huh? You need to do this, and it's going to make you feel worse. Not good. But it was a reminder of something good coming, right? Something good was around the corner, wasn't it? Oh, it was right around the corner. For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Uh, jump down over here to verse uh, 8. It says, first, Christ said this. This is, this is Jesus speaking, so we should listen. Uh, you did not, well, he's talking to his father. He's talking to the father. He says, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings or burn offerings or other offerings for sin. Nor were you pleased with them. Though they're required by the law, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was to appease him for the moment. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was an after-school program. 
that watches you till daddy comes and gets you. Do you understand what that is? That's the law of Moses. That's what it was doing. It was, it was just an after-school program. And then Jesus goes on. He says, uh, look. Oh, look at that. You wonder where I got the title for the series? Oh, God's Word. Uh, look, I have come to do your will. Uh, he cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. For God's will was, this is awesome. You ready? Are you all listening? For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Listen, that's why the virgin birth, that's why the manger, that's why Christmas, that's why he came, so that by the blood of Jesus Christ, you could be made holy. That's why he came. When you see all this video saying why, who he is, and what he's done, that's why Jesus came that you might be made holy by the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus in your place. A ransom for your sin. That's why he came. That's why he came. Uh, you know that that's always been God's plan. Did you know that? Like he didn't respond. Like, oh, the law's not working. I gotta come up with something better. That wasn't it. Uh, Isaiah 53.10. This is almost eight Hundred years before Jesus, uh, before the first Christmas, right? And it says that it was God's good plan to crush him for you. To crush him. Uh, first Peter uh, 1.20, I love the same thing, but it's a little bit more in detail. God chose him, Jesus, as your, you've already pointed to yourself as your, your, right? Your, 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 your. Okay, God chose Jesus as your ransom long before the world began. This was his plan. He loved you so much before you were a twinkle in your parents' eye that his plan was to send Jesus to pay for your sin so you could be made holy and be with him forever. That's his plan. It goes on to say that even though that was his plan, before the world began... Before he spoke and there was light. Before he spoke and there was water. Before he spoke and there was trees and plants and day and night. Before he spoke the planets into existence. It was God's good plan to ransom his son on your behalf so you could be made holy. That's amazing. That's amazing. But he has now revealed him. In these last days. That's the Christmas holiday. So it was that quiet night, silent night in Bethlehem. That was God's chosen night to reveal his plan. To reveal your ransom. To reveal good news for all people. That's what happened in Bethlehem. Jesus Christ, your ransom. 1 Corinthians 6 says you were bought. Listen, you've got you to pay attention to this. This is important. I'm, 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 I'm often lukewarm too, man. I'm, don't let the microphone fool you. I am lukewarm more times than I want to admit. And I'm sure I'm not alone. <clears throat> Sometimes someone has to speak some truth to you. <clears throat> <clears throat> you think about the people that don't know Jesus. I'm going to just, I don't know, you can take this as guilt, shame. I don't, do what you want with it. <clears throat> Those that don't know Jesus will spend an eternity, an eternity in a burning, tormenting hell. If you've been saved, you don't have to. Amen. But there's people who are. And you've been you want to talk about an unworthy servant doing his duty. You've been bought at a high price. You are no longer your own. Your agenda means nothing. Do you understand? Your plans are nothing. Your desires are nothing. You have been bought with the precious blood of Jesus. You are not your own. You are not your own. Ephesians 1.7 says, redemption through his blood, 
the forgiveness of our sin. Acts 20, 28 says, all of us, who is the church, who is the church? We are. Have been purchased by his blood. Romans 5, 9 We've been justified. Justified just simply means that we've been made right. We were once his enemy. Now we are not. We are family. We are, a br- we are his bride. I make a terrible looking bride and I understand that, but for some reason, this just speaks of how good God is. As ugly a bride as I am, he thinks I'm pretty. He thinks that, <laughs> he thinks that this beard is pretty. No, he really does. He really does. God loves Jimmy's beard. He does. But you make a terrible looking bride. (laughs) But he is made right. Why? How? By his blood. By his blood. And I, I kind of throw that on you heavy because there's so much at stake. And, 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 and don't, you got to fight. We're in a fight. We're in a fight. We're in a fight. We're in a fight. And, and, and we have to fight to, to, to keep Christmas heavy. It's heavy. It's not shiny, happy people. It's not Santa Claus. It's not little Jesus in a manger and have presents with your family. Like, that's all nice. It's heavy. This is his plan to redeem the human race. And it, and it was initiated that night in Bethlehem. And, and if you have received his grace bought by his blood, the scriptures tell us in Hebrews 10, 29, to not treat the blood of Jesus as common. If, 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 if he has gone to the cross and was tortured and killed so that you could be made holy and you've received that gift, you do not, I implore with, I implore to you, do not treat the blood of the covenant as common. Your life is not your own. You've been bought at a precious, precious high price. It's Jesus Christ's blood. Now, what do we do with this blood? Some, I, I don't even know everybody in here. I know most of you, and most of you, I, I believe, are, are Christ followers, and I, I don't know, I'm not the Holy Spirit, I can't see a heart, but... Uh, I know you, and I certainly hope you've made that transition, but some of you may not. Some of you may not have done that. Some of you may have thought you did, but you're hearing God yell at you loudly in your ear tonight, you've yet to make me your Lord. You've treated my blood as common. You've not responded to my love the way I'd want you to. And so I believe he has a word for you, and it's here Romans 3.23, everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. That's his holiness. Can you envision Mount Everest? That's the fringes of his robe. And God's holiness is, is up high. His standard is perfect. And all of us fail. His perfect standard. Anyone guilty of that? Everyone raise their hand, right? Yeah. This is what makes God so beautiful. I love one of my favorite verses in all scripture. Yet God with undeserved kindness. I don't even have that. I don't even have that. You treat me like crap, I'm gonna treat it right back to you. I need to do better. Yet God, I love you too, man. Yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. You see the ransom paid. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life and shed his blood. I just have one question, honestly. Have you done that? Have you done that? Have you acknowledged that you're a sinner, that you have fallen short of God's perfect standard of holiness? 
And have you acknowledged that and just said, listen, I, 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 I'm, I fa- I'm a total failure. And, I, and I'm just, I'm just going to tell you, Lord, that I, I believe that you went to that cross and, 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 and you're perfect and you, you, you shed your blood for me so that I could be holy. That's what you did. It's, it's honestly, it's not complicated. If you've never done that, and you want to enjoy, if, when you were hearing those songs earlier, if you were like, yeah, that's not any different than listening to like WMMO or, or some country song. Like, if, if you weren't feeling what some of us were feeling, it's because you haven't done that. Because there's fullness of joy in the presence of God. But you can't come into his presence tainted in any way. You must be washed clean by the precious blood of Christ. Like, I won't, I'm not going to beat around the bush. There's only one way. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, and no one gets to the Father except through him. And that's it. And so I ask you, have you done that? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ, the Lord? He is Lord. He wants to be your Lord, and he's knocking on your door. Will you let him in? Will you let him in? You're not going to believe this, but we wrap this thing up here by t- asking you, uh, just telling you one thing. And then we're going to, oh, listen, I'm going to wrap it up. And, and I'm get, the reason why I'm wrapping it up is intentional. I want you to have an opportunity to enter back into the throne room of God, to thank Him. If, if you've been purchased by His blood, Now is your chance to go into his room where he's hanging out and go thank him with your whole heart. So as the band comes forward to sing, I want to prepare you for that by just telling you this last thing. God came to die, to pay a ransom for many. And if if, if, if you're the one who's received the gift of eternal life, by the the ransom payment of Jesus Christ, then you realize why Jesus came. John 12, 27, in closing, it just, the the, the story is, Jesus is is approaching Jerusalem. He's he's approaching Jerusalem, and, and, and he knows that the cross is coming. He knows that the cross is coming. And he knows it's going to be painful. He knows he's going to absorb the full wrath of his Father. And, and, and this is what he says. He says, now my soul is deeply troubled. That makes sense, doesn't it? But I mean, yeah, we have 2020. We know what Jesus went through. And, and, but no one there knew what he was going to go through except him. And he says, now my soul is deeply troubled. And he asks the question. He says, should I pray? Father, save me from this hour. And, and don't we do that? Come on now. Don't, when, when, when pain's coming into our life, don't we say, can you please remove this? Can you please remove this? Can you please remove this? But here's what makes Jesus unique. He's like, no. But this is the very reason I came, to die for you. He knew why he came. And he was on mission. He was on mission, and that was his goal right there. So by his blood, you could be made holy. Holy. If you've never accepted the free gift of God through Christ Jesus on the cross, I want to talk to you tonight. I beg you, let me talk to you. And let me pray with you. It's it's really not that hard, but let me pray with you. Let me just help you to just talk to him and tell him that I, I need you. I just need you. I'm sick and tired of doing this myself. I just need you to help me and save me and guide me. And I just want to do that in prayer. So, these gentlemen are going to pass out communion. And I want you, to, I want you to, to, to just take some time to reflect on what I share with you. And there's a bunch of different things that you heard, right? I am just encourage you this, this way. If you've heard from God, don't harden your heart. Respond 
If it's respond in worship and singing, if it's respond because you need to get baptized, if it's respond because you need to give your life to the Lord, if it's respond because you finally need to just go all in and be his follower, if it's to respond and say, you know, preacher, I want to do something to serve the Lord to show my appreciation for what he's done for me, if it's to respond because you need to repent and say you're sorry to someone because you broke their feelings and you hurt their heart and you need to go make amends, whatever it is that he speaks to you in these quiet moments as they play and, and, and communion is distributed, whatever it is that he speaks to you I beg you I beg you I beg you because I love you please respond and then we'll get back together and we'll take communion together as a family Scripture said that we should not neglect the coming together of the saints, that we should encourage one another. So as an encouragement to your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, so that they can see too that they serve a living God, if he spoke to you tonight in some way through music or the word of God, raise your hand. Hallelujah. We're going to worship you, Lord. We're going to worship you. We're going 
We're going to sing to you. We're going to tell you how much your love just tears us apart and how much we love it when you do that. Lord, I am reminded this week, I'm reminded today of the immensity of the sacrifice that you brought to the altar on my behalf. Jesus in my place. Should I pray that this would pass? No, that's why I came. I came to give myself as their ransom. So don't treat it as common revolution because it's a wafer and a little cup of juice. What you're in your hand represents the blood of Jesus Christ, the body, the sacrifice, the ransom that was paid that you might be free from the just punishment of a holy God. So let's take this bread in remembrance of Christ's body. Again, don't treat the, the blood as common. You've been bought You've been bought with the precious blood of Christ, the forgiveness of sin. That's what you're holding your hand right now. This represents Christ's blood, the Holy One, the Creator, your ransom. Blood to pay for your sin that you might be made holy. Take it now to remember this. Lord, from this point on, I pray, I plead with you. I plead with you, Father, that you would help Revolution Church to have a new perspective on the manger, a new perspective on the virgin birth, a new perspective to a little stable, a new perspective to the baby Jesus, a new perspective toward Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. The Lord Jesus to come to serve us, to pay the ransom for our sin that we might be made holy. Now, Lord, help us to respond well to that. Help us to, to worship you the way you would desire. Hands lifted high if you want, on the floor if you want, dance if you want. Just tell them how much you appreciate the sacrifice that's been paid, the, the ransom that's been paid for the forgiveness of your sin, for your eternal holiness, because of Christ's blood on the cross, God has brought you into his very presence right now, holy, blameless, and without single fault. Because of that, we now worship you.
it is.